Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a very, very good day. I almost said I hope you're having a good Friday but it's Saturday. At least uh for me it is and I think in most parts of the world it's Saturday right now. I would have to look at a map. We'll be starting in about 23 seconds. Uh yes, in about 17, 16 seconds we will get started. Oh, let me just check one other thing here. Everything looks like it's working great. Two, one. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this live question and answer English lesson. Uh where as many of you know, you can ask me a question about the English language and I will try my very best to answer it. I do best with questions about pronunciation or usage or the right phrase to use in the right situation. I'll be honest, I'm not that good at explaining grammar concepts during a live lesson but I actually don't know any teacher that would be. Grammar is always a tricky thing, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to know exactly how to answer the question quickly and in a way where everyone will understand it. Hey, a few things before we get started though. I do wanna say hi to Rod, the English teacher. Uh, I know Anuat is here. Dave and Todd are here to moderate the chat. I see Judith in the chat, Jane in the chat, Patana, Freddie Wolf, Lolly Lolly, Julia Olis, Sergey, who is actually Natalia, I think. Paco San, Maria C. Uh, let me scroll back. Clara, I think I said Judith already. You know me by the time I scroll back and start saying hi to people. I start repeating myself. So, if I said hi to Maria C already, I'll just say it again. Hi to Eduardo as well. Hi to Hidayet and hi to everyone else who is here today too. Uh just hang out. Learn a little bit of English. Maybe participate in the chat by having a few little English conversations to with each other. Uh but I'm happy to be here. I was actually a little bit nervous today to get started because Usually, I don't really think about how many people are watching. Usually, in my mind, it's just four or five people um especially those in the chat who I know have been around for a long time. I just imagine there's only four or five people but today, there was uh forty five people waiting and there's already a hundred and eight. So, that made me a little nervous. So, I'm just going to pretend again that there's just about three or four people in the chat. I'll just pretend I'm talking to Rod, the English teacher. Lolly Lolly, uh, Maria C, uh, and maybe Julia, because those are the last few names I see there. I'll pretend that's all that's watching and then try to ignore the fact that there's a few hundred people. Anyways, the question form is live. A few people have asked questions already, and we'll get started on this lesson. Thomas has the first question over here. Hello, Bob. Do you know the meaning of mojo? When you have a lot of mojo, it means you have a lot of energy. You have a lot of energy that can easily um make people like you a lot. Let's look up the official meaning though. Uh meaning of mojo. Uh it's basically to have like a magical sense about you. To be attractive to other people because you seem to have this mysterious quality. There you go. Uh let's look up another to have a lot of mojo. Um Yes, exactly the same thing. So, it it means you're popular, persuasive, successful and there's something attractive about you. So, there you go. Hopefully, some of you or all of you have lots of mojo. Uh let me go to the next question from Ye, someone who's very excited. Hi, Bob. What does refer, a foot, myriad and roll out mean? Thanks a lot. So, when you refer someone, like if someone said to you, Hey, you should watch Bob the Canadian's English lessons. They're really good. That person would be referring you to me. If someone says, hey, you should buy stuff at this store. It's a really nice store. They are referring you to the store. When something's afoot, it means it's happening. Um if you notice some people acting suspiciously outside of a store um and you think there's something afoot, you think they're planning to do something. Uh myriad simply means uh variety, many and variety. Let's get a good definition of myriad. So, here we have countless or extremely great number with lots of variety. So, there you go. Um let's see. Mostly though, extremely great in number. Networks connect a myriad of computers and let me just check something here. 
myriad. Yes, I wanted to check the pronunciation because as a Canadian, I don't always know if I say things differently than the rest of the world but I would say myriad and that's what the computer said too. Uh when there's a rollout, it means something new is coming out. So, maybe there's a new computer coming out or a new phone coming out from Apple. They would have a rollout. That's like the first day that it's available or that it is announced. Uh let me check something here. Okay, I had a weird error. I haven't had errors for a few weeks but everything seems to be working fine. By the way, I do not have my outdoor camera hooked up today. So, sorry, I lent that camera out um and uh I will hook it up again. There's no snow outside just so you know. Um so, there's nothing to look out outside. Look at outside. Let's see here from let's see none. Hello, I'm new here. So, hello none. I'm glad to have you here. Thanks for watching and I hope you have an interesting uh time for the next hour or so as I answer these questions. Next question from Renata. Hi, Bob. Wish me luck on immigrating to Canada. I'll need it. I'm determined to pursue that and ignore the haters. I'm not one of them. Have a great day, sir. Much love. Well, Renata, I wish you all the best as you pursue immigrating to Canada. I hope it goes smoothly and I hope that you have um a good time in the planning and the actual uh immigration process however long that takes. Natalia, hello, Bob. Please tell us a little about supply and demand in meaning, need and require things. So, supply and demand is an economic concept. When there are things that you buy, there's a certain supply, okay? So, the supply of milk in your country, there might be a lot of milk available. The supply might be high or maybe there's not very much milk. The supply is very low. Demand is the desire of people to buy that product. So, when demand is high, it means a lot of people want the product. When demand is low, not very many people want the product. So, when a new iPhone comes out, um sometimes supply is low and demand is high. There's not a lot of phones for sale but there's a huge demand. A lot of people want them. Um and then need and require are basically the same. Like I you need water to live. You need to drink water. You are required to drink water in order to live on this planet. Claudia has the next question. Um let's see here. Hi, teacher Bob. Sometimes I read sentences like yesterday's newspaper or today's class and I'm always in doubt. Are they correct? Thanks for your patience. Yes, we do create contractions um with words like that to show the possession. So, we say yesterday's newspaper or today's class. Um it's just it looks kind of funny because um you're not sure you need the apostrophe but it definitely is how we do it. Um let me just check something for a moment. I'm going to type quickly. Um let's see here. Yeah, so it's definitely it looks weird but it's definitely how we say it. Hey, I do wanna uh say hi to Olga P. Hi, Bob. How to pronounce the word society? Thanks. We live in a society. That's what I would say. Um the world around us has decided that If we work together as human beings, it's better than all trying to live by ourselves. So, we have created a society. Um so, there you go. That is the pronunciation and thanks, Olga, for being a member for so long. Um Franco, is there another phrase that says that means the same as how much longer? Um kind of like how much longer um when will we get there? So, when we're driving in a car, sometimes someone will say, how much longer is this trip? How much longer before we get to the next city? Or you could also say, when will we get there? It's not exactly of the same measure of time, is it? Um how much longer is this movie? How long? No, I think that's basically the phrase. How much longer is how we would uh, definitely say that. Um how much longer is this English lesson? <laughs> how long how long does it go for? Um let me see. Next question. I'm trying to keep moving here. Andre Padron. Hello, Mr. Bob. Do you use the word ask when you have a question and when you request something? Please give some examples. Thanks. Um we sometimes will say to someone, do you mind if I ask you a question? 
and we do use the phrase ask to talk about the behavior of inquiring about things, right? Like you need to ask your teacher. You need to ask your parents. Um if you want to go shopping this afternoon, you need to ask your mom for some money or you need to ask your dad for some money. So, that's how we would use that. Um um but we don't actually use the word ask when we do ask the question. Like, may I have um you know four cans of soup please? But we might introduce it by saying um do you mind if I ask you a question? Uh I'd like uh to go out later today and could you lend me ten dollars? There you go. It's a polite way. Let's see here. Next question is from Oh No Hey. Hi, Bob. Please show me how to pronounce appointment, Azure, defend and faculty. Thank you. So, when you have an appointment like you need to go to the doctor, you need to make an appointment. That's the time slot where you can go to see the doctor. Azure is actually, let me look this up. I have to look up the color. I think it's like an aquamarine, like a blue green. Yes, it's definitely a bright blue color like a cloudless sky, azure. And then should I check the pronunciation? Azure, yes. I don't use that word very often. So, I thought it would be a good idea to check. Defend, when you defend something, you protect it. So, sometimes armies will defend the border and faculty refers to all of the teachers or professors that work at a school or a university. Uh let's see here. Um from Judith. Hi, Bob. My word today is well nigh and brisk. I hope you and your kind family are well. I'm gonna change that word. So, when it's brisk, you can go on a brisk walk which means to walk quickly. When you say it's brisk outside, it means it's a little bit chilly, a little bit cold and well nigh is a very British term. Um I don't think we say it very often. So, almost a task that is well nigh impossible. It's rare for us to use that word in Canada. I am familiar with it though. Uh but uh we yeah, it's it's a little bit formal, right? So, it means almost like if you say well, it's well nigh 10 degrees outside. It means it's almost 10 degrees but in Canada, it would be rare to hear people say that. Let's see here. From Kurdish. Hi, Bob. Other ways to say I love you in Canadian English to my girlfriend and please can you speak normal not as a teacher once. Just I'd like to see how it is that it is that you speak. Well, I do speak fairly normally on this uh, on the live streams. In fact, if you wanna hear me speak at my normal speed, if you watch my short lessons on my second channel, I tend to speak at normal speed for the last minute or two. Um I sometimes I speak a little bit more slowly but usually I'm complaining about being tired and then I talk really quickly um on those videos. But if you want me to explain your answer, in order to say I love you to someone, you can say I love you. That is the most common way to express affection. You could also say I adore you but that's kind of yeah. You would probably say that more if you were talking about things they do. Like I adore the way you um you know look at me um when we're going for a walk or something like that. But I love you is the most common. That is the phrase that you would use definitely. I love you. Um and that was pretty much my normal speed. Um So, here's from Albert. Hello, Bob. I found on the map an interesting place very close to your farm. This is Chippewa Creek. I guess it will be interesting if you tell about it in one of your videos. At some point, I will. The river that flows past my farm actually eventually goes into the Niagara River and eventually goes over Niagara Falls. So, that's what that's kind of cool about it. So, um I'm not late. How to use the word overwhelmed. When you're overwhelmed, it means there's too many things happening in your life and you're having trouble getting all of them done. Sometimes in the morning when I'm getting ready to leave for work, I feel overwhelmed because I have to get my computer and I have to make a lunch and I need to have breakfast and I have to make sure I don't forget anything. So, I feel a little bit overwhelmed. Uh let's see here. Omer says, hi, Bob. I hope you have a nice day. My question is, are there any differences between resource and source? Thanks in advance. 
So, the source of something is where it comes from. Like rivers will have a source. Um when you um say something that you know, you will say what the source is. Like if I said a famous quote, I could say the source of this quote is um a book called uh Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card which is a good book by the way. A resource is something that's useful to you. So, in the world, a resource is something like gold or silver or other natural resources. In the world, if you're studying something, a resource is a place you get information from. The library is a good place because it has lots of resources if you're doing research. So, hopefully, that made sense uh to you. Uh let's see here. E Muska says, hi, teacher Bob. I have a question. Does come in and out your way mean the same with come naturally? Come in and out your way mean the same as come naturally. I'm not sure. Like, come in and out your way. I'm trying to get to the meaning of this phrase in my head and it's not coming to me. Like, when you come into a house, you come in through the front door. Uh, when you're outside, you could t- say to someone, well, come outside or come out and then that means to come out of the house. Um, so, yeah, come your way or come naturally. I wonder if you're talking about how to dress for an occasion. Like, if I was to say, um, you know, come your way, we would usually say come as you are, you know, wear whatever um or come, wear what you would naturally wear. So, not sure E Muska if I got the true sense of your question there but hopefully, I did. Uh from Rachel, we have, can you help me? So, I'm gonna fix this question a bit. Can you help me pronounce these words or can you help me with the pronunciation of these words? Through, though, thought and taught, okay? So, he drove the car through the tunnel. Um he could have dri- gone over the bridge though if he wanted to. I thought he would take the bridge. Um when I taught him to drive, I taught him how to drive a car over a bridge instead of through a tunnel. Hopefully, that made sense. Those were some silly sentences actually. Um let's see here. Um next question from Graziella. Hi, how to pronounce Eaton or garden? Thank you. So, um a common question in English um around lunchtime is to say to someone, have you eaten yet? A lot of times you like to eat with other people, right? If you're at work or school, it's sometimes nice to sit with other people and have lunch together. So, you might say to someone at work at around 12 o'clock, hey, have you eaten yet? Oh, no. Do you wanna sit down and have lunch together? And then a garden is a place where you grow things. A lot of people will have a vegetable garden and they will use it to grow vegetables. Let's see here. Next question is asking me about some personal information. So, I'm going to skip it. Um let's see here. Let's see here. This is from Azam who is Hussain's mom. Hello, Azam. Hi, the best teacher. Good evening from Iran. Do you have beehives on your farm? During my visit in 2015, we bought some Ontario honey from Balls Falls and it was delicious. Balls Falls is actually relatively close to me. It's about an hour's drive. It is a very cool place to go and in fact, in one of my videos, I think it was let's learn English in beautiful places. You can see the balls, the falls at Balls Falls. Um no, we don't have beehives on our farm. We have a lot of things, Azam, that we do on the farm. We have thought about getting bees but we're just too busy uh to maintain the beehives and to do all the work that goes along with uh collecting uh the honey and all that kind of stuff. So, cool though to hear that you visited this part of the world. Very, 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 very nice. Uh let's see here. Wish you a great day says, could you help me explain widen, broaden and extend? So, when a road is narrow, sometimes they widen the road. Sometimes they will broaden the road. In those two situations, those words mean the same thing. But if a road only goes from one town to another, they might extend it so it goes to a third town. Okay? So, widen goes this way and extend is like to make something longer. Uh let's see here. Javi says, in this chat, which one is correct? I need a book. Which one? Any book. 
I don't have any books or I don't have any books left. So, listen to what I'm saying. I need a book. Correct. Which one? Any book. So, that all works. You wouldn't pluralize it. You would say any book and then I don't have any books is the correct one. So, there you go. Uh let's see here. From Eduardo. Good morning, Bob. I heard it on TV show. Could you explain it? I heard it on a TV show. Could you explain it? But it's right around the corner. The subtitles say but there is there are a little chance. Oh, when something's right around the corner, it means it's going to happen soon. Winter is just around the corner. Winter is right around the corner. So, we don't have any snow yet but it's December and eventually I'm going to wake up and it will be a it'll just be a snowy day and I'll feel like winter has arrived. So, winter is right around the corner. So, that's what that means. That it's something that's going to happen soon. Let's see here. Brahim, hi dear teacher Bob and all viewers. How do you feel when you replay your own videos? Many thanks. Like, how do I feel when I watch my own videos? It's kind of weird to see me talking on the screen. I always feel like I'm actually hearing my brother. My younger brother and I have the same voice. We sound very similar. So, when I hear myself speak in a video, um it always sounds a little bit weird. If you're talking about how do viewers feel when you replay your own videos, I'm not sure how viewers feel about that but I know when I watch my own videos, if that's what you're asking, Brahim, it's always a strange experience for me. Natalia Belgrade. Hello, Bob. How are you? My question is, what is the meaning of the word do? So, I'm gonna add a couple words in there. What is the meaning of the word do and how can I use it? Best wishes from Belgrade. So, do. So, when you take out a library book and you read it, eventually the book is due. You have to bring it back to the library. There is a due date. Um when you are in school and you have an assignment, the teacher will say, this is due tomorrow. It means you have to do this by tomorrow. So, that's one meaning of the word do. It has other meanings. Let's see here. When it's expected or planned at a certain time, the book is due on Friday. So, there you go. Um to do something with proper quality. So, driving with due care and attention. Oh, that's a good one. Um and then there are a few other ones. Oh, he had to pay his dues. Yes, we sometimes use the plural to refer to a payment you need to make. So, maybe you join a club uh like a fitness club and you have to pay your dues. That means every month you need to pay thirty or forty dollars um in order to remain a member. Let's see here. Apple the frog. Hi, Bob. What's the difference between the word prefer and like? They're pretty much the same. We use the word like a lot more though. Like, I like pizza. Um actually, there is a slight difference here. We usually use prefer when we're talking about two things. Like, do you like pizza or hamburgers more? You could say, well, I prefer pizza over hamburgers. If I was given the choice, I would prefer pizza. So, there is a little bit of a comparison element. Um like is more of a broader term just to state um what you do enjoy and what you don't. Here's from Yaroslav. Hi there. Teacher Bob, today I want to ask about the meaning of phrase every of the phrases every once in a while and feel like if I was to say. Oh, and if I was to say. Thank you. Take care. Have a great weekend. So, every once in a while means something that happens but not regularly, okay? So, if I said, you know, every once in a while, Jen and I go to a restaurant. That probably means once or twice a month, maybe once every other month. There's no exact amount of time associated associated with it. Um in class, I could say to my students, every once in a while, I will give you a test. So, there's no schedule. It just means every two or three weeks, there will probably be a test. When you feel like doing something, it means you want to do you want to do it. This afternoon, I know I will feel like having a nap. Um I'm not sure I'm going to feel like going shopping. So, I used it in the positive and the negative. It means to want to do something. Uh and if I was to say is just a way of introducing a thought in a conversation. Um if someone said um winter is late this year, you could say, you know, if I was to say something about winter, I would say winter is early this year. Like it's 
It's kind of a way to introduce something that you are going to say. It's kind of a filler thing, I think. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna skip the next one because it's quite detailed to explain. So, I'm just gonna let that one go. And this question is from Hilda. Hi, I'm new here. Hi, Hilda. Welcome to the channel. Just to say thank you. That is the way I'm looking forward to learning English. Thanks. I'm Brazilian. Sorry, grammar is not good. That is fine. I'm happy that you are here. I'm happy that my videos and my live lessons are helping you, Hilda, uh, learn a little bit more English. Uh, let's see here. This is from The Chan. I am at an intermediate middle level. We're gonna add level to the end there, okay? Why do I still have difficulty understanding movies and TV series? I'm gonna correct it. Series, not serious, series. That would be fabulous if you can give me some tips on it. You need to do it more. You need to watch TV series with the subtitles on and then watch the show again with the subtitles off. Um, you need to take notes about words you don't understand when you watch the first few episodes. Uh, many times when you start watching a TV series, they'll use the same vocabulary for the whole series. Like if you are watching a show about space or you're watching a show about crime, learn as much vocabulary as you can in the first one or two episodes because they'll keep using them. Learn the names of the characters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh and you just need to do more. I prefer TV series. Uh TV series for for me in my opinion are a better way to learn English because you get to hear the same people over and over again. Whereas with a movie, you know, it ends after an hour and a half and it's over. Uh let's see here. Next question. This is from Ario. Hello. Please collab with Mr. West, the interactive English channel. He lives in the US. If you comment on his Facebook, tell him I said hi. You two are great. Well, thank you. I will look into it, uh, Ario. I don't do a lot of collaborations during the winter. Um the fall, winter and spring because I'm teaching. Uh like I still go to work every day. But maybe this coming summer, I will look into contacting Mr. West and see if he would want to do that. Uh let's see here. Devanch, hello, sir. I hope you're doing, I hope you are doing good today. As I, I'm gonna remove the word per. As I know your parents are from Holland. So, which language is your mother tongue? English or Dutch? I am a native English speaker. I do not speak Dutch. When my grandparents came from Holland and uh when they first arrived, they decided to only speak English in the house. So, even though my dad spoke Dutch, from the day he came to Canada in their household, they only spoke English and my mom had the same experience. So, um my parents did not speak Dutch in our house. So, I only speak English. In some ways, I wish they had. It would be cool to be able to speak that language but they did not. So, my mother tongue is definitely English. Uh let's see here. From Sagdas. I'm not sure I pronounced that right but is it possible to learn new words without translating into your mother tongue? Yes, definitely. One of the best ways to learn words is to learn the word with a picture. This works really good with nouns and here's some simple examples. You shouldn't learn the word cat and then write the word cat in your own language beside it. You should write the word cat and draw a picture of a cat. Anytime you can visually attach the meaning of words to images, you can start to get rid of your native language from the thought process. It's a really good technique. Uh let's see here. Next question from Slava. Bob, hello from warm Israel. We are planning to immigrate to Nova Scotia. Please tell us a few interesting things about Nova Scotia. Little fix there. Thanks a lot and best regards. So, I've been to Nova Scotia once. I went as a kid. It's one of the few vacations we went on. Um it is a beautiful place. It is surrounded basically by the ocean. It's not an island but when you get to Nova Scotia, most of Nova Scotia yeah, has coastline. The tide goes really high and really low in the Bay of Fundy and apparently, it's one of the cheaper places to live in Canada right now. 
housing prices are low in Nova Scotia. So, I'm not sure that will last but um I'm sure you will enjoy it when you get there. Let's see here. Marcel, I feel the meaning of the word out here but never use it because I'm not sure where and when it is appropriate. Thank you. If you mean out there, there is a word in English like you could say wow that that guy's really out there or that band was really out there. Um it means that they're acting in a not in a really normal way. Let me get a good definition of this for you. Meaning of out there. So, when you describe a person that acts in an extreme or unusual way. So, that is what that means, Marcel. I hope that's what your question was. Hey, give me a moment here. We're gonna switch to members only chat for about 10 minutes. So, if you are not a member, don't panic. The live stream is not ending. I'm just switching the chat to be members only chat for about 10 minutes. Let me just do a little audio check here. Uh so those of you who have clicked that join button and join the channel, uh you are free to ask questions directly in the chat for 10 minutes. For the other 400 or so people watching who are not members, please enjoy the questions. Don't leave because we will go back to questions from the form uh in about nine or 10 minutes. Kaiseta says, hello, dear teacher Bob. Would you pronounce the words receipt and recipe and give the examples of using them in sentences, please? So, when I go to a store, I pay for what I buy and they give me a receipt. Uh then I take the food home and I use a recipe uh in order to cook something fun. So, a recipe is a list of instructions on how to cook something. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher Bob. Just a random question. How much water do you drink every day? I drink about three or four of these a day. I think because I'm a teacher and I talk all the time, I probably drink more water um than the average person but maybe not. But I always have a mug or glass of water with me in class. Moto Explorer. Uh hi, teacher Bob. Could you help me with some examples of the word thus? I have read it but never heard anyone pronouncing it thanks in advance. So, the word is thus. Um It's not used very often. I can't even think of an example. Um let's get an example sentence using thus. Um oh, it auto corrected to this because it doesn't recognize the word. Yes, there you go. It's just not very common. Um let me just Google still doesn't want to Um example sentence with the word thus. See it right away thinks I mean this. Uh let's see here. An example of thus is showing how something is to look when completed. Some of the trees didn't have many apples. Thus, we had to walk further into the orchard. So, there you go. Again, not a very common uh word at all. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher Bob. Just a random question. Do you ever wish you could travel back in time? Have fun while doing this live stream. I don't know. Sometimes I think it'd be fun to travel back in time and invest money uh in a bank account and then go back forward in time and see how much interest has been accumulated. Mode eggs. Hi, Mode. Good to see you. Hi, Mr. Bob. Last time you talked about tracking down our IPs. I wonder if you can do that if we don't use the form. I need to know in order to take more security measures. Uh yeah, you can't do it with the form. So, with Google Forms, you can't actually do that. So, I misspoke. So, um Olga, do you have Christmas mood already? No. Um people are putting up Christmas decorations. People are doing a lot of Christmas shopping but I do not get into a Christmas mood until it's cold and snowy outside. So, the snow came and it melted. So, I'm not in a Christmas mood. Uh let's see here. I missed Freddie Wolf's question. Salut, Bob. How are you doing? Well, when it's raining or snowing just a little bit, which expression should we use in this case? It's humid outside or it's wet outside or both are fine. So, if it's raining a little bit, we would probably say it's drizzling or it's misting is another way to say it. We wouldn't really say it's humid. Humid is a hot day where the air feels really thick because there's lots of humidity in the air. Uh but if it's raining or snowing, um with snow, we would say, oh, it's coming down lightly or it's snowing lightly. 
um, or there's just a little bit of snow coming down. Um, and with rain, we would say it's drizzling or misting. Uh, Julia, hi, dear teacher. Could you please explain the phrase, tis the season? So, it's a short version of the phrase, tis the season to be jolly uh, and it refers to this Christmas season. Basically, people will say that because everyone should be in a happy mood in December because Christmas is coming. Tis the season. Tis the season to be happy. Uh, tis, by the way, means it is the, okay? Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Just a random question. What's your opinion on plastic surgery? Um, I don't really have much of an opinion on that. Um, I know that sometimes it's nice for people who have minor blemishes. Like, if you look here on my face, I have a bit of a blemish here. I might get it removed someday. Like, if the doctor says, oh, the spot on your cheek, you know, it could become cancerous or something. I I would get it removed and get a little bit of plastic surgery but I'm not someone, I'm not gonna get any plastic surgery to change how I look but for some people, it's something that they like to do but uh, it's not for me. Mode eggs. Someone asked about do the moment I joined the live stream. I think with all due respect is a good phrase to know plus, what's the meaning of due diligence? So, when you say all due respect, it means you give someone the respect that they deserve. Due diligence is to do your research well. This phrase is used a lot when someone decides to um, run for office or to be a politician. Um, they need to do um, other people will do their due diligence in researching their background. So, it means to research thoroughly and to research well. Lolly lolly, bonjour Bob, pas de question aujourd'hui, merci, pas de problème. Uh, Moto Explore, it looks like it's going to disappear soon. Sure, I'm not quite sure what, maybe there's a conversation higher. Um, look, yeah, maybe the word thus is disappearing soon. Maybe that's what you mean. Natalia Belgrade, hello again. It's interesting, which level English do I need f- to study for at uni- do I need for, sorry, let me, let me reread this. Which level of English do I need in order to study at university? That's how I would say that. I think in order to come to Canada, you need to be a strong A2 or a strong B1 in order to study in a high school um, and a strong B1 or B2 in order to get into university, somewhere in that range. Um, But each university might have a slightly different requirement. They might have an an IELTS test number or a TOEFL test score that you need and I'm not sure what those are. Sorry, Natalia. Rod says, Mr. Bob, I believe we both like Apple products. Have a great weekend. I love apples. I love eating them. I like the Apple computer company and I have an Apple laptop. I have a a MacBook Air that I use at work. I do not have an iPhone though. I have an Android phone. Kaiseta, cats can really grow on you. It was your dear teacher reply on someone's comment. What does it mean? Thank you. Oh, when something grows on you, it means maybe you don't initially like it or you don't initially like them but eventually you start to like them. Um, this can happen in families as well. Maybe um, you could say something like, at first, I didn't like my brother-in-law but he's starting to grow on me. That means he's doing things that make you like him. So, maybe you don't like cats but you get a cat and the cat's nice to you and the cat's happy when you come home and treats you and purrs when you pet it. You would say the cat's starting to grow on you. It means you're starting to like the cat. Um, Julia, can you also give some examples with implementing? When you implement something, it means you add it, okay? So, at our school, we did not have a program for teaching English to international students but we decided that we would create a program and we would implement it. That means we would start it. We would add it to what we also offer. Moto Explorer, I read this at a grocery store. Are you sunny, tidy or friendly one in the family? Now hiring, what does it mean? So, if you have a sunny disposition, it means you're happy. If you're a sunny, we would use the word disposition. Like, they have a sunny disposition. It means you smile a lot and you treat people nicely. Tidy simply means that you are clean. You like to keep your work area clean. You are a neat and tidy person and friendly just means that you're always happy and nice and kind to people. They're looking for different personality types at the store. That's why they have that. Mode eggs. How often are the phrasal verbs slow 
away and crop up used. So, I wouldn't use slow away. Um that sounds a little I'm I'm trying to think if there's a different one. But crop up is used quite a bit. Sometimes problems crop up. Uh sometimes when you go to do a live stream, uh, a few problems can crop up. A few technical problems. Uh Julia says hi to Mode. Betty says hi the cutest teacher Bob. A controversial topic. Do you think criminals can change? I do. I think that it depends on the type of crime that has been committed. I would say if someone who is a teenager um let's say they are stealing things and they get caught for theft, I think they can change. But I think there's also people who commit really bad serious crimes and I'm not sure they can. Um mode eggs. Ask grammar questions. I know you love grammar. We can make an exception for you. <laughs> yes. Dulio says, hi everyone. I'm just watching today. Hi Dulio. Good to see you again. Julia says, thank you so much. Mode says, Rod is having a premiere after this. I know this sounds like a shameless plug but I don't care as long as I'm doing it for a dear friend. I did not check Rod's channel this morning but yes, if Rod, the English teacher is having a premiere, you should go. I'm assuming it starts at 12 or 12.05. So, do a search for Rod, the English teacher on YouTube and you will find it. Uh Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. Imagine one day you were doing a video lesson after a surgery and we couldn't recognize you. No way. Yes, if I got um well that happened sort of. I shaved my beard and mustache off once and people didn't people said in the comments that they didn't recognize me. So, that was kind of funny. Um Lolly, thanks Mo Eggs. Yes, I love grammar. I'll ask a question next week. Betty Lou says, hi, the cutest teacher Bob. An interesting question. How often do you dream? By the way, it's 12 39 PM. I dream I think every night but I don't always remember my dreams. Uh, I know last night I had a bad dream and I woke up um but I can't actually remember what it was about. Um it was kind of a it's a weird feeling when that happens. Um oh, stowaway. It wasn't slow. Did I read it wrong? Maybe. Oh yeah, look at that. I need my reading glasses. <laughs> Thanks for the correction mode. Um yes, I need my reading glasses. Stowaway. Um so, there's two ways to use that word, right? Like a stowaway is someone who sneaks onto a ship or a um that might be one word though and not two. But yes, when you come home from the grocery store and you have all of your groceries, you can stow away your groceries in the cabinets. It's not a common way to use the word. You might use that word though if you brought groceries or supplies onto a boat, you would stow them away or if you brought groceries into a camper trailer, you might stow them away. I think that's when I would use it. That's it's kind of a strange word. Not used very often to stow away uh your products. Um let's see here. Uh Lancaster says uh Lancaster Andrew Miller has become a member. Welcome An- Lancaster to the channel. Uh Maria C says hi Bob. How do you spell this word in Canada? Practice practice. I know that in British English they spell it with a C for the noun and with an S for the verb. So, we mess up practice and spell it both ways and we usually do it correctly or wrong. So, because we live close to the United States and because we have some British elements to our language, we sometimes make mistakes. Generally, in Canada, we spell practice with a C for the noun and for the verb. So, that's the but we're not supposed to. In school, we're taught not to do that but uh we do just use it with a C almost all the time. Uh let's see here. Uh Tran says, hi, Bob. There is a di- is there a difference between delicate and gentle to describe a person? Yeah, delicate can mean a person um isn't like they're not very strong and they're not really athletic. Like they're a very delicate person. Gentle can mean kind or uh just someone who you like to be around. Uh hey, let me just turn off members only chat and I'll finish up the members questions. Give me a second here and we will get back to the form. So, let's see here. Um Natalia, thank you, Bob, for all the things what you did for learners for English learners. No problem, Natalia. Uh let's see here. Valeria says, hi, Bob. I would like to learn the name of the disease in English. I think one video about that, it would be excellent. Uh oh, of diseases. You know, I could do that. I did one on medical things. I could do one on diseases. It wouldn't be a very happy lesson but you do need to learn the words, right? 
Uh, let's see here. Modags, maybe the worst thing about Canadian English is the spelling. You never know whether they're going to use the American or the British grammar. Yes, that's true. We tend to flip-flop back and forth. We use whatever we feel like using. Rod says to me and Mode Eggs, thank you. You're so kind. I'm blushing right now. No problem, Rod. Rod is basically thanking us because we shouted out the fact that he has a video premiering right after this uh, live lesson. Uh let's see here. Betty Lou, I have Lolly and Julia saying welcome to Lancaster. Thank you very much. Betty Lou says, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Can money buy happiness? What's your opinion? Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day. Okay, so money, I don't think money can buy happiness but I think a lack of money can make life very challenging. So, what I would say is if money can buy some happiness if money lets you rent a nice apartment or have a modest home. If you have enough money to pay your bills and if you aren't stressed about um paying for things in life. I think that helps you be happy. Do I think uber rich people or ultra rich people are happy because they have lots of money? No. But I do think there is a certain kind of happiness that comes when you can pay your rent and you can pay your bills and you can buy food for your family um and maybe do something fun once a month. I think that does make people happier for sure. Uh let's see here. Uh Kaiseta says, my husband has shaved his beard. He has changed a lot. I need time to recognize him to, to get I don't know how to express this thought in English. Help me please. Yes, you would just say um you barely recognize him. That's what I would say. When I shave my beard, uh Jen will say something. Oh, I barely recognize you. So, I barely recognize him is how you would express that. Uh hey, let's get back to questions though. Let's uh Spend a few more minutes with this. Freddie, not the robot. No, he's not not an AI. Uh that by the way is a reference to yesterday's lesson. I did a lesson yesterday on computers and in the chat, we joked a little bit about maybe Freddie was actually an AI um but uh Freddie's not. Freddie's a real person. Hi, Bob. Comment ça va? I lately read in the newspaper the word strain for the new variant of the corona-19. Why? Have they a similar meaning? Thanks a lot. Yes. So, viruses can have different variants when they mutate and we also call that a new strain. So, there's a new strain of the virus right now. There's a new variant. Uh they both mean exactly the same thing. Alex, why do so many young people use like in their dialogues? Well, like it's just something like that they like to do, you know? I think it's like They don't know exactly like what to say. So, they like think for a bit and then they're like so that was an example. It's it's a filler word. I I even use it a little bit but maybe not as much as some younger people and using the word like as a filler word comes and goes. Um it was very popular a few years ago. I think less so now um but definitely um I can give you another example. Um let's pretend I'm like 17. Um so like the other day, my friends and I, we were like walking along and we were like, what do you wanna do tonight? And I was like, well, maybe we can go to a movie and my one friend was like, uh we could but like I just went to a movie last night. So, like could we do something else? And it's kind of weird sounding but it it, and I'm doing more than what would be normal but that would be examples of all correct ways to insert the word like uh into sentences. Let me see here. Uh, I should thank the 437 people watching. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Um we're gonna go for another 10 minutes. If you're new here though, please don't forget to click that red subscribe button. Um you'll get notified when a new video comes out. I think you can turn on a bell too if you want. Get extra notified. I don't know exactly what that does. Zhao Pedro. I don't know if I pronounced your name right. Hi, professor. Do you have some advice to a student that is gonna take the TOEFL IBT? So, if you're taking any kind of English test, I highly recommend you hire someone as a tutor. Uh if you look below, there's a link to a place called Preply. There are other places as well where you can find English tutors that you can hire to help you online. Look for a tutor on Preply or italki or Cambly. Um look for a tutor who specializes in preparing people for that specific test, okay? 
That is the number one thing I recommend. It will cost some money but getting some coaching and training from someone who knows about the test can be very very helpful. So, that's the number one piece of advice I would give. Christina says, hi teacher. Why do you say I look forward to seeing you again and not the second sentence which is wrong. You are you are correct. The second sentence is wrong. What's the rule? Thanks. Well, when you say I look forward to seeing you, we're using that form of the verb um because it's it's not it's kind of referring to something that hasn't happened and it's not specific in time, right? Like I look forward to eating food from different countries someday. I look forward to seeing you again. I look forward to watching that movie. Um yeah, I guess it's a grammar question and I'm stumbling here with my explanation but uh it's definitely the correct way to say it. Um I should do a whole video on um why what when and where to use verbs with ing to kind of help you with that but sorry I didn't give you a good explanation, Christina. Reddish brown fox. What is the difference between goal, target and objective? So, in a certain sense, they all have the same meaning. Um so, your goal might be to pass your English test. Your target is to pass your English test. Your objective is to pass your English test but they also have specific meanings besides that. You know, a goal is something that happens in a sports game. A target is something you can hit with an arrow uh and an objective is really just a goal in like the first sense. Sorry, I think I'm um we're 50 minutes in and Bob the Canadian's explanations are becoming less clear but I'm gonna keep soldiering on. I'm gonna keep trying to explain these answers but generally if there's something you want to do in the future, we say that's a goal or it's a target or an objective. Let's see here. Dylan says, what is the difference between that and this? Well, it depends how close it is to you for one thing. So, this cup, I'm using the word this because it's close to me and I'm holding it. This cup is kind of pink, red, pink, orange. It's kind of a mix of all these colors, this cup. Um but if I was talking about behind me, you see the doors, I could say that door uh sometimes opens while I'm doing a live stream. So, it's far away from me. So, I'm going to use that. There are a lot of other rules but that to me is the simplest one to use right now. Um so, if something is close to you and you're touching it, you would use this, you know. This cake is delicious and then I might say to someone else, are you enjoying that cake? Because it's far away from me. So, um of course, I could use this in that situation as well because we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. So, let's go with one of many explanations. One explanation is if it's close to you and you're touching it, you should probably use this. If it's far away, you might want to use that and I should probably make a lesson on that as well at some time. Um Simran says, whenever I try to imitate native English speakers, it seems funny. Should I keep my accent pure or can I improve my English speaking things? I would still try to reduce your accent. I think anyone who learns a language um realizes that you're going to have a bit of an accent that's going to come through from your native language. So, when I speak French, people can definitely hear that I am a native English speaker but I do try to practice and reduce the the English sounds I'm making quand je parle français. When I speak French, I want to sound as French as possible but I do know that I won't sound like a native French speaker. So, anyways, do what you can to reduce your accent um and uh, I wouldn't say don't don't think that it seems funny. It's just something every language learner has to do. You have to try and make the sounds of the language you're learning and sometimes you might think it sounds funny or sounds silly but that's just how it goes and you just need to enjoy it. Uh let me see here. So, Volodymyr, salam teacher, please could you explain how to say in English about any equipment which gets older during running to use one word like wearing. Thanks a lot. So, we use the verb to wear out. So, like car engines wear out over time. When I drive my tractors, 
parts of the tractor wear out. Anytime you're talking about a machine and the fact that it's slowly, you know, things are slow. I I don't know how to say it without using the verb to wear out. Like the bearings in a tire wear out after a while. Um the rubber on a wheel eventually wears out. So, that would be the word we use. Um it wears out. Um but you use the word uh wearing. You can also say there's a lot of wear and tear. So, when something is wearing out, when it's getting old, there's a lot of wear and tear. Uh let's see here. Kathy says, what does a whole lot mean? I saw this phrase in a movie and the meaning with the context was like much worse. Is that correct? Well, there's a phrase like this could get a whole lot worse or I don't think this is gonna get a whole lot better anytime soon. It's just a way of emphasizing what the situation you're talking about. Um like there's a whole lot of people coming this way. It means there's lots of people coming this way. Um there are a whole lot of people watching this live stream right now. 441. So, you're emphasizing the amount of something for sure. Um but your two phrases can go together like um if we don't leave now, it's going to get a whole it's going to get a whole lot worse, okay? Or it might get a whole lot worse if we don't leave right now. That's in a movie of course. You don't have to leave the live stream. It's not gonna get worse. (laughs) Uh Zainab, is there any website or app to save a lot of words or to help you learn a lot of words? Um so, there's a number of different ways to do that. Quizlet is really good. Quizlet has a web page and an app. A lot of people use uh Anki or Anki. I don't exactly know how to pronounce it. Let me find it. It's something that helps you Anki, yeah. It help it helps you learn words using spaced repetition. If you're just wanting to keep a list, I recommend using Google Docs. If you use Google Sheets, you can actually put words in boxes and there's a formula to translate the word to your own language. That's really cool as well. Um Zuzu. Well, there's a big difference between these two. What's the difference between hung out and ask out or to hang out or to ask out? If I'm going to hang out with my friends, it means we're all going to the same place and we're going to sit around and talk and be social. We're going to have a conversation. We're gonna sit around. We're gonna talk. We're going to hang out. When you ask someone out, there's a romantic element there. If there is someone who you like who is attractive to you, you might say, I think I might ask them out. I would like to go on a date with them. I would like that person to be my girlfriend or I would like that person to be my boyfriend. So, um when you ask someone out, there's definitely um a romantic element to that, okay? Um if you are if you want to go to dinner with someone but it's just a friend, you wouldn't ask them out. You would say, I'm gonna ask them if they wanna go have some food. I'm gonna see if they wanna go out for dinner. But when you say, I'm going to ask someone out, it definitely means you are interested in them in a romantic way. Uh PD Grus, hi Bob. What do you think is the best accent we should learn things? It depends on what your goal or target or objective is. If your goal is to live in England, you should learn English from someone with an English accent. If your goal is to study in Canada, you should learn English from an American or a Canadian. If your goal is to move to Australia someday, you should probably focus on learning to understand the Australian accent and to speak with an Australian accent. So, it really depends on your goal. If your goal is just to learn English, I would say listen to all of them. Um in particular, I think the Canadian accent is very neutral and it might be a good accent to learn but that's just me. Uh, I'm Canadian. I might be a little bit biased. Um Marcel. Hey, a teacher Bob. How do I use the word discrepancy in a sentence? So, let's say there's a list of numbers. Let's say my son goes to market and sells flowers and he takes 50 bouquets And when he comes home and I see the list of what he sold, he's only written down that he sold 45. There's a discrepancy. Like we sent 50 bouquets and you only sold 45. There's a problem with the numbers. So, what I think should be here isn't what I see. There is a discrepancy. 
Also, how would you explain the adjective presumptuous? Thanks in advance. It's when you uh, assume things in advance and uh, it's kind of a bit like being arrogant. Uh, let me look this up. Uh, presumptuous. It's hard to spell. Um, let's see. When a person fails to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate to act in a presumptuous way is similar to acting arrogant or not knowing how to act properly in a situation. So, there you go. That's the official definition of presumptuous. Pew says, hi, Bob. What is the difference between was determined and has been determined things? They are similar ways of referring to a decision that was made in the past, okay? So, it was determined. Yeah, or also you can say like that how to describe a situation. Like the example I was gonna give is this. Um it was determined that the person was speeding when they had the accident. It has been determined that the person was speeding when they had the accident. So, it simply means that a fact was discovered. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Let's see here. Last question from Rez. Sorry, there's way too many questions for me to finish them but I got through most of them. Rez, hi, Bob. Could you please let me know the better way to ask about the subject below? I wanted to know the value of cards of gift cards works better for someone. Ten dollars, twenty-five dollars or fifty dollars. Um let's see. I want to know. I would probably say I want to know what value of gift card works better for you or I wanna know what value of gift card works better as a gift for my employees. Um ten dollars, twenty-five dollars or fifty dollars. I think that's what you're asking. Um I'm just asking because I wanted to know what amount. Yeah, I would say value. Yeah, what a value of gift card works better. Definitely, that's what I would say. Hey, there's like 25 questions left or 20 questions left. I don't have time to answer them all. Sorry about that. I do wanna say thank you though to the 424 people here watching. I'm going to wrap this up but if you are not a subscriber, don't forget to click that red subscribe button. If you want to support me, Click the join button and listen to my little spiel about what I'm looking for. Um and if you don't wanna subscribe and don't wanna be a member, just come and watch videos whenever you can uh if you want to. I do appreciate the views as well. Uh I do wanna thank Todd and Dave for hanging out. I did hear that uh Rod has a premiere happening in a little bit. You might wanna head over to Rod the um but I do wanna say bye to as many people as I can. Bye to Rod and 36 and Judith and Maria C and Dave the Canadian and Rahi and Apple the Frog and Audi, Sani, Suf, Shafuhudin, Eduardo, Gregor. I know Judith and Ario were here. Freddie, uh, bye to Freddie as well. Bye to Claudia and Katerina and Julia Olis. At this point, I'm just saying names twice, aren't I? I can't keep track. I should have a better way to say thank you to people for hanging out and learning a bit of English. Bye to Mode Eggs. Bye to Lolly Lolly. Bye to all the people who are subscribers and members. Have a great Saturday. See you Tuesday with a new lesson and I do wanna put a plug in for my second channel. If you haven't been watching my lessons on my second channel, um I think this is the right code. I'm just gonna punch it in there for a second. See if it pops up. The link that pops up in the chat might be a link to my second. There it is. Nightbot just says, Learn the English phrase, the dead of winter right here. That is a link to my second channel where I teach usually about three phrases a week. Actually, six a week because there's two in every video and I do walk around at the end of the video and talk about whatever I feel like talking about almost at my normal English speed. So, do check that out. The link is in the chat from Nightbot. If you don't see it yet, it should pop up in a sec. Anyways, have a great Saturday. Um do remember to watch parts of this lesson again. If there were little sections you didn't understand, maybe come back and listen to the answer I gave to your question so that you can remember it better and uh don't forget a shorter version of this lesson will come out tomorrow um in about 12 hours probably, a little more than 12 hours um and it will have really good English subtitles if you need them. I think I'm promoting myself too much at this point. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. Uh thanks to all of you that watched the ads at the beginning. That helps a lot too. 
uh, and have a good Saturday. Have a good Saturday afternoon. I'm going to either have a nap or I think I need to go shopping or wait. I think I might need to work outside on the farm. Yes, I think I have to work outside. It looks nice out. I wish I had a camera to show you. Anyways, bye everybody. Have a good day. Um, I'm really going to say bye now and click the end button. So, see you later.